went through a very hard trial, family divisions. And, but you know, right before that happened, the Lord asked me, He said, my daughter, are you willing to stay on the potter's wheel? Are you willing for me to make you? I quivered inside because I knew what He was asking. And this was probably about a week before it happened. And I thought for a minute and I pondered and I said, Lord, I said, yes, Lord, but just keep me in the making. And it seemed like when the Lord restored me in 2004 in October, it seemed like just one trial after the other. And I mean, it just got worse and worse. And I'd say, well, Lord, next year be better. Next year be better. Well, it wasn't. It got worse. And I said, well, Lord, next year it'll get better. Hallelujah. I said, thank you for keeping me through this, but next year it'll get better. Hallelujah. Well, it didn't. It got worse. And it just seemed like it was just from one trial to the other. And then when the Lord, and that's the reason I knew what he meant when he asked me what he asked me. He was telling me that it was even going to get worse to brace myself. But would I be willing to be made? He said, what I've got for you to do. He said, I've got to make you quickly. Hallelujah. And I said, yes, Lord. I said, Father, I'll stay on that potter's wheel. Yeah. I lost my husband in 2007, my mother in 2008, and my father in 2009. But I tell you what, with each loss, the Lord, my goodness, He always just makes us stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah. And I said, Lord, and Mama told me years ago, she said, Brent, I want you to have my guitar. And at that time, I couldn't even think about her passing away. I said, oh, Mother, I don't even want to talk about that. Because I just loved her so much, I couldn't even think of it. And, and when I was living with her, she's, we, you know, she, we talked about it. And she still wanted me to have it. And now I have it. Hallelujah. You know, I told the Lord, I said, Father, you just see to whatever you want me to have out of what Mother's got. I said, Lord, you just see to it. I get it. And he did. And he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to sing this song tonight. And I want you to listen to it. It means a whole lot to me. Her brother Terrell sang it years ago. Hallelujah. I hope I can see it. I've cried so much. He lives, he lives, he lives in me. Oh, he lives in me. Jesus Christ, the King of all kings. And he, he lives in me. He watches the ocean from the sky, from the fire of his chariots each day. Oh, he rides upon the winds, but oh, he still lives in me. By the swinging of his fingertips, he put every star in the sky. way out there in space oh but he lives in me hallelujah I feel him he lives he lives he lives in me oh he lives in me Jesus Christ the king of all kings and he he lives in me Hallelujah. He turned the water into wine, then he crawled the mm. Oh, he holds the waters and sees in his hands. Oh, but he lives in me. Y'all sing it with him. He lives, he lives, he lives in me. of all 
old keys and he lives in me he took a few fish and loaves of bread and a great multitude Jesus fed then he raised Lazarus from the grave and he eats and the loot reach out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I want you to sing this verse with me, and I want you to just raise your hands, and I want you to get your minds upon the Lord. He lives, He lives, He lives in me, oh Jesus. He lives in me. Jesus Christ, the King of all kings, and He lives in me yeah. by the swinging of his fingertips he put every star in the sky then he hung the moon and sun way out there in space but he still he lives in me everybody raise your voice he lives he lives he lives in me oh Jesus he lives Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. A lot of times before my son and grandson moved in with me, I'd get in there in my living room. I'd turn gospel music on and preaching. I still turn it on, but most of the time it's when they're not there. And or I get back there in my bedroom since they're with me. But when they weren't with me, I would get right up there in the living room. My goodness, I'd be having church. My, 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 my. I tell you what, my neighbors walked around outside. Hallelujah, they got a ear full. Because I tell you what, I don't have to have the church building to have church. Just me and Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, but I love the fellowship of my brothers and sisters. Don't get me wrong. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, I love Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, I'm gonna try to sing this other song. I've been wanting to sing. And I made sure I got the words to it today. Hallelujah. It's a little hard to see from that distance, but I believe I might make it. Hallelujah. If I have to start over, I'll start over. Hallelujah. Bless my well, my grandson done disappeared. I was going to get him to come up here and hold it for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it used to be when I was a sinning, Satan stood off somewhere a grinning as the pleasures he brought. They turned on me. Teardrops came like a rain of falling till I heard my dear Savior call. on me yes, come on. I won't walk without Jesus I won't talk without Jesus and I refuse to live one day as before no I won't go without Jesus it just ain't so 
Without Jesus and I refuse to live as before. Hallelujah. A beggar was waiting at the gate just to set it all his life. He's been regretting cause he never stood or took a stone down the street. But listen what happened. Then Peter and God happened by his way. Look on us, oh Peter did say. Now rise up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he leaped to his feet. Without Jesus, I won't talk. Without Jesus, and I refuse to live one day as before. No, I won't go. Without Jesus, it just ain't so. Without Jesus, and everything that I would do, just won't do without. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, give him a great big hand. Clap. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, he's good, isn't he? My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I try to be obedient in every service to what God wants me to do. Hallelujah. Because I tell you what I have found in my walk with him. If I just be obedient to him. Hallelujah. He always moves. Always. He comes right in. And there's a reason why he's wanting you to do what he's telling you to do. Because there's somebody there under the sound of your voice. Hallelujah. That needs exactly what he's telling you to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Feels good to play mom's guitar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. She loved this guitar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, everybody knows this song. Why don't we get up and stretch a little bit? Hallelujah. Yes. If you can, clap your hands. And let's just praise Him for a few minutes. Thank you, Jesus. I saw the light. I saw the light. So aimless, life still with me. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger in the night. Praise the Lord, I saw the light. Everybody lift your voices. I saw the light.
Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. My feeling among us tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. I have this song. Oh no. You two on my channel. And everybody's been liking it. And I had a young sister write me from another country. And she says, Sister Brenda, every time I turn that on, turn it up loud. She said, my little girl just dances. <laughs> she said, we really truly don't know and understand every word you're saying. Because they don't speak English for a while. But she said, we know enough that you're singing about Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah! I tell you what, he'll pass those barriers of, of language, won't he? Hallelujah! Just by the moving of his spirit! Hallelujah! And she said, will you give me the words for that song? <laughs> I said, yeah, I will. I'll write them for you. So I did. I wrote them there. And, and I tell you what, and other people have just been writing and saying how much they like the song. Well, I've been hearing it ever since I was a young little girl. Hallelujah. And I tell you, I just appreciate the Lord. Love Him. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Sheila, somebody give her a microphone out there. I want her to help me sing this song. Thank you, Jesus. She don't have to come up here, but she can sit out there and sing it with me. Thank you, Lord. And everybody else, join in too. We come to worship God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we come to have a good time. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Wonderful, wonderful Jesus is to me. Counselor, the Prince of Peace. Oh, From all sin and shame, wonderful is my Redeemer, praise His name. Wonderful, wonderful, Jesus is to me, Counselor, Prince of Peace. Almighty God is He, saving me, keeping me from all sin and shame. Jesus. We're going to sing out one more time. All right. I want everybody in here, I'm going to put you 110% into it. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Not 50%. Come on. Not 70%. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory, Not 80%. Glory, glory, glory. But I want us to put 110% in. Amen. Let's go over. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your voices. Hallelujah. And I want them to be able to hear us all the way down the street. Because I want everybody to hear about my Lord. Yeah. Woo! Just how wonderful He is. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. Wonderful. Jesus is to me. Castle of the Prince of Peace. Mighty God is He. He's saving me. Keeping me from all sin and shame. Wonderful. Well, we're going to do that again because my mouth went out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you going to find something out about me. I'm not easily discouraged. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to pressing. It's like Brother Roy was preaching about that mustard seed last night. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm used to pressing through concrete. Hallelujah. Wherever I got to go. Hallelujah. I ain't going to be stopped. I might be hindered for just a little bit. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory now one more time. Then I'll move on in the sun. I feel good in the Holy Ghost. Don't everybody just feel the 
goodness of the Lord unto him. Amen. Oh, I do. I love him. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. Say what he fills us with joy and happiness. Amen. My goodness. You know, a lot of Christians saying they ain't walking around in the mully grubs. They ain't got a burden, but I carry a burden with a smile on my face. One person asked me one time, says, Sister Brittany, you're just smiling all the time. I said, I can't help it. It's the joy of the Lord Amen. running all over me. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> With a burden that you carry. I said, well, I do carry a burden for souls. Amen. Hallelujah. But I tell you what, I don't try to carry the burden. That's See, that's what I did one time. I was seeing all the devastation and all the things that were going to happen that's coming on the land that is on the land now. And visions, and I mean, I just got under such a heaviness and heavy load. And I would cry out, warn people, and tell people, and tell people. And it seemed like the more I cried, the deafer the ear got. <laughs> and the heavier I got. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> it liked to kill me. I laid in bed one day, and I was just in my heart, and my chest was hurting me so bad. I said, Lord, if you're ready to take me, just take me off because I'm ready to go. But I don't feel like you're through with me. I said, Lord, help me to release this burden to you. I can't carry it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said, my daughter, you're trying to carry the burden. You can't do it. He said, you have the burden in your heart. He said, but don't carry the burden. Because he said, all of you that are heavy laden, come unto me and I will give you rest. A lot of times we try to carry the burden and he never meant for us to do it. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Woo! So a burden for souls can be light. But yet you're weeping and travailing in the altars. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh, I love him. He's wonderful. Wonderful is the Lord. Do I need to wait just a minute, brother? Okay. Hallelujah. And I ain't going to make him stand up again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, devil don't like that's oh, all right. Oh, he he don't a liar. Like it. That's all right. <laughs> 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 Woo, hallelujah. You can have your seat. Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as you sit up, get up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm happy. I'm rejoicing in the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Tell you what. A lot of people say, well, you don't have to make all that wreck. He said, make a loudful noise, son, too. Woo! <laughs> joyful a joyful, but he also said, lift up your voice loud. Yeah. Hallelujah! So I'm making a joyful noise loud. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. What's this, Brenda? You don't have to be all that loud. I can't help it. Jesus, make me this way. I'm outside of the microphone. I'm not loud like this. But you know, oh, I can't help it. When the anointing gets on you, you just... You got it. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to try it one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we'll just forget that. Sister Sheila's got a microphone. Hallelujah. Lift your voice up, Sister Sheila. And everybody else say. Wonderful, wonderful. Jesus is me. Jesus is to me, cancel Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Turn it down. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't push it up far enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I tell you, I was just praying, meditating today on the Lord. And, and uh, I just said, Lord, I really feel in my heart what you want me to minister on. And I said, if that's the way you want me to go, it's the way I want to go. And I said, this word is so needful in this hour. Because how many knows that people need to hear about the goodness of the Lord? And they need to hear, hallelujah, about His power, about His deliverance, and His healing. Because many believe that, that Jesus did raise from the grave, but yet He don't do like He used to. That all was left back in the New Testament. Back there when Jesus was walking among the people in Galilee. And you have many churches today that preach it. That healing is not for today. But I got news for it. There is nothing in this Bible that God has ever left out. What he done from the very beginning, he's doing today. Hallelujah. He is God and he changes not. Many men change. Men make traditions and doctrines of devil. Teaches many things that is not biblical. But there is a truth. And just like the Lord spoke to me, and when he told me not to name the ministry after my name, he said, I want you to name it up after Spirit of Truth Ministries. Because he said, my daughter, you will speak nothing but truth. Amen. So anything that he has not revelated to me yet out of this word, I don't preach it. I preach what has been given to me. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't just dig through here and try to dig up a revelation somewhere and then head to the pulpit and start trying to preach it. Because that's where you've got On their ideology. On their theology. Oh, but I tell you, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He forever will be. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Hallelujah. I wish that could have stayed a little long. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But the devil's alive. I believe they'll come back. Thank you, Lord. But I want you to turn your Bibles to Mark. Chapter 10. Hallelujah. Everybody got it. And we're going to start reading that verse 46. Jesus, everywhere he went, people thronged him, just like Brother Roy was talking about last night. Because everywhere he went, he healed and he delivered. But there were some that come up to him and asked him. And said, Lord, will you heal me of certain things? He said, do you believe that I can do this thing for you? Yes, Lord, I believe. He said, well, then go in peace. Be thou made whole. And let it be according to thy faith. So sometimes when people come for prayer and they turn away and they walk away not healed, Sometimes it's because it's according to their faith. Because man does not heal. I can pray for you till morning time. And if the Spirit of God don't heal you, you're not getting healed. Hallelujah. Now there's times I do have the gift of healing in me. And there is times that 
going to hold me up there, you know. Hallelujah. Well, see, that's you trying to step out in you. Well, the Lord has said, step on out. Don't worry about what the limb feels like. He's wanting us to go just like this. Hallelujah. And when you step out there, you'll see that you are standing strong. And the Lord met you right there. Right there. Hallelujah. And God, you know, the disciples come up to Jesus. And he said, Lord, increase our faith. I was praying today and I said, Lord, I have never seen your church so sick, so bound as a whole. Now I'm talking about as a whole. Talking about a remnant that is stirred up and on fire for God. But I'm talking about the church as a whole. They are laden with illnesses. And we all fight illnesses from time to time. And as we fight these things, we believe God. I had someone tell me, said, when I was going through all that, my heart was, I mean, it was about two weeks there. I wrestled with that thing until finally the Lord just told me to let it go. Let it go. I said, Lord, you've got to help me let it go. Because I was fixing to have a heart attack. <laughs> I mean, both veins in my neck done popped out. And all the way down my arm and my fingers were numb. All back in my neck and all across my shoulders. And I said, Lord, I don't feel like you're going to take me. Because <laughs> I don't feel like you're through with me. And I had someone tell me, say, you need to go to the doctor. And I said, well, if I went, I wouldn't take anything to give me or told me to get. So it's useless for me to go. <laughs> When you say it, <laughs> hallelujah. Some people think I walk in reckless faith. But that's okay. The Lord told me he was going to make me a woman of faith. And he has. And I don't do anything if I don't have a piece about it. If I get a piece about it, I'm not saying I might not go. I need a couple of moles I need to tuck off. And I said, but Lord, if I don't ever get a piece about that, I won't never do that either. Hallelujah. Sometimes you start messing with things and then it turns into things that would not. That's right. Hallelujah. Because anytime the devil can get you into a place that he can deceive your mind and think that you have got something in your body when you don't. Come on. First thing that comes to people's minds, oh, I got cancer. That's right. You know why? Because it's one of the diseases that's most feared. It's fear. But he said, fear not these things. Because he said if you fear it, it'll come upon you. That's right. I went through something just two weeks ago. I had a battle with the flu. And then the Lord, then the, the devil just attacked me all in my stomach, all in my back. So you just giving the devil going, no, I'm not. I'm fixing to show you something. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I was even hemorrhaging and my age you don't need to be doing it and so I said Lord I said Father this is in your hands and the first thing the devil told me oh you got cancer you need to go to the doctor I said you old slew foot I don't need to go nowhere I said Jesus Christ is my healer and that is who I'll depend upon I said if he takes me so be it but it won't be my cancer hallelujah I tell you what he gives us the authority hallelujah invested in us in the name of Jesus Christ yeah, yeah. That's right. Woo! Yeah. the sinner man don't have it Amen. the backslider don't have it Come on. but that child of God that's striving to live by the word of God he has empowered us yeah. hallelujah you take authority over that devil. Yes. Quit letting him push you around. Come on. You know the only authority the devil has against you is what you let him have. What you let him have. Because he has none outside of that. That's right. Hallelujah. That's the reason 
I don't even let him talk to me. First little words I notice that it's the devil. I say, get on out here. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I ain't listening to you. Well, see, people, they listen to it. That's right, they do. Before you know it, I'm getting prayer requests from everywhere. Sister Brenda, oh, I've been having so much pain. The devil's telling me I've got cancer. Tell him I'm going to die of a heart attack. You know, it runs all through my family. <laughs> Whoa, Sister Brenda, what am I going to do? Come on. That's the first thing. Quit listening to that devil. Yeah. Hallelujah. And release your faith unto God. And we're going to pray together. And this thing is leaving. Yeah. Hallelujah. And it, it does. It leaves. Why? Because first, I've got their attention back up on Jesus Christ. Right. Got it out of the devil's territory. Hallelujah. Where they can reach out in faith and believe. And believe. But see, that's where the devil wants to keep them. It's back there. The Bible tells me the Lord don't give me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. People say, well, when I get older, I'm just going to get Alzheimer's. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. He told me he gives me a sound mind. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk in a sound mind. Hallelujah. Until I go home to be with Jesus. Woo. Hey, Sister Brandy, you stepping out there. Yes, I am. The Lord told me to. The Lord told me to. Hallelujah. I don't care what size that lamb is. I don't look at the lamb. I've got my eyes single upon Jesus Christ. And that's what I look at. He tells me I can step out. I can step out. Woo. You know, a lot of times we're proven and tested and tried. Just to see if we are going to have faith. Just to see. He said he tries the reins of the heart. Well, I tell you what. I like this right here. I said, Lord, what I'm fixing to read. My, my, my. I said, too long. Your people have been willing to follow after the flesh. And listen. You know, there's three voices that will talk to you. It's the devil, your flesh, or God. Amen. You get rid of two of them. You only listen to God. And believe me, you know when the one's talking to you, what's talking to you. The devil's always trying to condemn you. Always trying to make you believe something you don't have. Trying to make you think that God ain't going to move for you. Amen. Now that's the devil. Now flesh, when it moves and it wants to talk, it's trying to rob you from what God has given you. Amen. Because the flesh hates God. He said, oh, my flesh don't hate God. Why, you calling the Bible a lie? Hallelujah. Come on. Let every man be a liar, but God be true. That's exactly right. Hallelujah. Your flesh outside of God hates God. It, hates God. it fights up against Him. It wars against Him. Hallelujah. Walk in it. Take it. Come on. Hallelujah. I had someone tell me, says, Sister Brady, you, you preach such a word of faith. I said, that's all I know. I can't preach nothing now. I ain't going to preach nothing now. Come on. I don't like nobody talking down around me. Amen. Don't even want it in my atmosphere. Hallelujah. Sister Pam, she went in revival with me for my service. And she started saying something. I said, Sister Pam, cancel that out. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I said, now everything you just said, I said, you renounce it and you speak for faith. I said, you don't go and walk in that. Hallelujah. Because the power is in the time of death and life. 
What you speak, you will bring to you. Oh, I don't know. Well, the Bible tells me so. They want to believe that it says Jesus loves me. Yes, I know. Oh, the Bible tells me so. Well, just as sure as He loves you. Hallelujah. It's as sure as He'll deliver you. And just as sure as every bit of this world. Every bit of it. Don't pick and choose what we want to believe. Come on. But let's believe all His Word. Right now we see in part That's right. through a glass darkly. That's right. That's like somebody. Have you ever seen anybody that wants to make everybody feel like they know everything about the Bible? From Genesis to Revelation, there ain't nothing else to be revealed. Ain't nothing else. They done got it. They done wrote commentaries. They got everything figured out. Well, I'll tell you what. They missed the boat by a long mile. Hallelujah. They can search from here to eternity. And they will never reach the bottom of His riches and His knowledge. Come on. Hallelujah. And this book is written in a mystery. A mystery. That's a reason the carnal mind cannot comprehend it. And when it does, it twists the scriptures to their own damnation. Yes. Hallelujah. That's the reason you've got a church on every corner and they believe this one and that one believes that. And that one over there believes that right there. you got a no spirit going through the land right now. They've got a Catholic priest. They've got a Muslim. And they've got a Jewish rabbi. And they're all getting together. They've done made a documentary on it. And they're saying there's one God but three faiths. I said, that is a lie. My Bible tells me there's one faith. One God, one faith, one baptism. Amen. Hallelujah. But see, people are running after that. Oh, isn't that just wonderful? We can just all love one another, my goodness, and just have a good old time. Well, you know what they're going to have a good old time in? Hell. hell. That's exactly what they're going to have a good old time in. I tell you, I don't hold back the Word of God. When God tells me to say something, I say it. Hallelujah. Don't make no difference. If the law was to pull up here right now. Say you're having a hate speech. Well, we might as well face it. It's here upon us now. And whenever God tells me to say something, I say it. Hallelujah. But I ain't preaching against that tonight. That sin. I don't preach against the people. I preach against the sin. The sin. Amen. The sin. Love the people. But there is a place in the Bible. God said, I hate the wicked. So there comes a place when they're not willing to hear His voice. He turns them over to a reprobate. Ain't nothing that you can do. Then He hates them. You say, oh, I don't, I don't know. No, I'm not. Right. Now, Sister Brenda, I just don't know about that. How, well, read your Bible. Right. Read your Bible. Because he's sitting there. He loves all flesh. Come on. And it's not his will that any man should perish. But all come, what? To eternal life. But when that man chooses to disregard God, and walk in pure evil and wickedness. Come on. And there comes a time. Now God works with every so different. He might give this one a thousand times over here. And this one over here, he might get one chance. You know why? Because God knows the heart. Yeah. And he knows to be ended from the beginning. So why should he tear with someone that he knows that will never hear him? Hallelujah. And many times he'll turn them over to a reprobate. Hallelujah. And God's doing that right now. Throughout the land, through the earth. Many are being turned over to reprobate. They're still preaching. They're still shouting all over the church. They're still speaking in tongues. You say, now, Sister Brenda, I don't know. Let me tell you something. When you've got a hundred dollar bill and it's real, well, when they make a counterfeit, you've got to have that real to have the counterfeit. Isn't that right? right. Hallelujah. Well, believe me, the devil knows how to make his, his vessels. Hallelujah. Preach with an anointing. It ain't God's anointing, but it's his anointing. Come on. He's got 
got his own tongue that he gives to these people. And they shout and dance everywhere. They crawl on the ground. They bark like dogs. They howl at the moon. They right there ought to tell them that God ain't in it. God ain't going to have nobody howling at the moon. But people are deceived. Deceived. God has no part with wickedness. Hallelujah. But there's coming a time and a place that I believe that every soul will have a chance to either receive him or reject him. But I tell you what, I believe that there is still a people that will hear and receive. He said, well, it don't. Look like it used to, you can put a tent up like this. My goodness, you can put it way out in the backwoods. People would find it. You didn't even have to run broadcasts. You didn't have to put up posters everywhere. Word of mouth. Oh, the Holy Ghost is moving. You got to think of putting up a tent over there. Oh, you mean they're putting up a tent over there? My goodness, they're already driving by. Can we help you put that tent up? My goodness, I know the Lord's going to move. Well, they were hungry. Hungry. But people have lost their hunger. They have lost their first love. Lost their first love. Hallelujah. We have got to turn back and get our first love. Hallelujah. That means you go to the Lord and repent. I repent daily. Oh, Sister Brenda, you don't have to do it. Oh, yes, I do. Hallelujah. I'm going to make sure my heart is pure. I'm going to make sure my spirit is pure. And I'm going to make sure I'm walking according to this word. Because he can't use me otherwise. Hallelujah. He can't use me otherwise. I want to be a vessel that will be effective. Hallelujah. You know, I said, Lord. I said, it seems like the more we preach and the more that we teach your word. The more that turns against it. Because all people want anymore just about is a smooth message. That's what they want. They don't want that smooth doctrine. They want their ears to be tickled. If you don't tickle my ears, I ain't a coming. Well, stay at home then and be lost. Hallelujah. I'll work with people. I'll say, come on, come on, come on, come on. And I'll still even say, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> but after a while, I says, Lord, it's up to you. I've done all I can do. I'm not going back to you seeing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes I go back anyway. Hallelujah. Because I just love people. I can't help it. I just love people. I love them. Hallelujah. How, even when people, there ain't an enemy I've got that I do not love. And I do not pray for. Hallelujah. And I can truly sit here and tell you I don't have an all against one of them. Not one of them. No matter what is said or done, I do not have an all. You know why? Because I'm already in my prayer room crying. Lord, don't let no all be in my heart. Lord, don't let this touch my spirit, Father. Lord, you told me, Father, that we were going to suffer because you suffered. Lord, if, we, if we're not willing to suffer with you, we can't reign with you. I said, Father, help me, Father, that my spirit, my heart stays right. But see, people sometimes, they don't care. And they go on them old haughty spirits. Believe me, when somebody's got one of them old spirits and they're fighting it, they try to hide it. <laughs> but I tell you what, they can't hide it. You can't hide it. But I'm so thankful that God is doing the work. And that He is repairing. You know, He said we would be repairers of the breach, didn't He? Didn't He, Sister Sheila? Isn't that something? I'm so thankful that God has reconnected our past. That I, I tell you, I just... Whew, mm. I just rejoice. Hallelujah. I tell you what, I bet the devil's over in the corner somewhere just boo-hooing and crying. I said, boy, I thought I had that. Well, he's a liar anyhow. He's a liar anyhow. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you just have to go pray. <laughs> Leave everything alone and pray. And let God work it out. Hallelujah. But a lot of times we want to work everything out. I'm going to get to this scripture. <laughs> but I'm going to start reading at verse 46, chapter 10. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of 
Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. Because why? He'd been blind from birth. That's all he knew. He couldn't do anything else. He couldn't work and make a living for himself. Hallelujah. So he done the best next thing he thought to do is to go sit on the corner of the street and beg. Well, this day was his day. Hallelujah. He was a begging. Oh, but he heard a noise. And he heard him saying that Jesus of Nazareth was walking up. Hallelujah. Jesus the healer. Jesus the deliverer. Hallelujah. Oh, and he said, let me read it and then I'll expound on it. <laughs> he said, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy upon me. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. Oh, then you had them old hypocrites, those old Pharisees, Sadducees, and just them that just didn't understand. Standing over on the side and said, Bartimaeus, shut up. We don't want to hear you crying out like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I tell you what, it ain't them that's blind. Hallelujah. If they were blind, hallelujah, they would be crying out too when they heard that Jesus of Nazareth is walking by. Amen. Hallelujah. He wasn't going to listen to their nonsense. Hallelujah. Because listen to what he said. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more. Amen. <laughs> Hold your peace, Barnabas. Don't you know people don't want to hear that? Don't you know? Hallelujah. The people don't want to hear all that racket. But I'll tell you what, Barnabas. He was still crying out. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy upon me. Hallelujah. It's so good to see y'all coming. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, there ain't a one of them out there. If they had been blind from birth, they would have been crying out there with him. I tell you, if there had been five blind men sitting there, every one of them would have been crying out. Amen. Every one of them would have been beseeching the Lord. Amen. Listen to what it said. Whoa. And Jesus stood still. See, they got his attention. He wants us to get his attention. You get desperate enough, you'll get his attention. Amen. Hallelujah. And thank God he lets us go to that point. Amen. That we get desperate. That we want the Lord to move Amen. for our situation. Right. Right. Hallelujah. But listen to what it says. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Hallelujah. See, Jesus, I don't believe he liked that the people were wanting to keep, shut him up. Because his heart was full of compassion and love. He wanted to reach out and touch Barnabas and give him healing. Because that's just how Jesus is. Hallelujah. He don't want any people to be blind. And that's whether it's spiritually or naturally. He don't want anybody to be deaf. Whether it's spiritually or naturally. And it goes on and it says, Commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. Isn't that something about Jesus? Be of good comfort. Be of good comfort. Rise. Get up. Hallelujah. He calleth thee. Woo! He calleth thee. That's what the Lord is doing out here on this corner. Hallelujah. His anointing is going out and he's calling. Come for the souls to come in. Say, so I'll give you peace. Amen. You don't know peace now, but I'll give you peace. Amen. Many are in bondage to drugs and alcohol, Amen. prostitution and all different things. But the Lord said, you don't have to be in these things. I'll break the bondage. Amen. I'll break the chains. 
Hallelujah. There is not nothing that the devil can ever put on you that Jesus Christ cannot break. Right. Hallelujah. All he's saying is come unto me. Come, on. come, come. Hear my voice. Now listen to what blind boy the man is saying. This is speaks volumes to me. And he, talking about who? Blind Bartimaeus. He said, and he, what did he do? The first thing that he done, casting away his garment. He didn't want his garment anymore. Hallelujah. Because that thing is dirty and it's raggedy. Hallelujah. And it's full of all wickedness and sin. But he wanted the new garment of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I believe right there because he cast away that garment, it moved upon the Lord. Amen. It said right there, he rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? Jesus knew. He didn't have to ask him. He knew. But he wanted to hear it. Why? From his mouth. See, Jesus is wanting to hear from you. Amen. What do you have need of? What do you need from me? Not that he don't know already, because he does. He's just wanting you to ask. He said, ask and you shall receive. Right. Hallelujah. And it goes on and says, The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Come on. That I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith. Thy faith. Some people say, Well, this Brian just don't have the faith. Yes, you do. He said he gave a portion of faith to every man, a measure of faith to every man. Amen. Hallelujah. So he's wanting you to act upon that faith. Amen. Act upon it. I've heard many Christians, weak Christians. But it's because a lot of times they're not sitting under a word that preaches faith. That's right. Hallelujah. I mean, God's full of love. Believe me, yes, He is. And He loves all mankind. But you can't get in your pulpit and preach on love every service. Hallelujah. You just can't do it. you got to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen. And any word you preach is going to have faith in it. I don't Amen. care if you do get up and preach love. It's going to have faith in it. Amen. Hallelujah. But there's a true love. There's a man-made love. Yes. And there's a true godly love. And God wants us to walk in His true love. Amen. In His true love. To have a true burden for soul. Amen. Hallelujah. And true love will tell you the truth. Come on. Hallelujah. Right. I'd rather somebody tell me. They say I'm fixing to walk out in front of a train. Hallelujah. If I'm not... Got myself aware enough. And then a lot of people are wandering around. Blind. Groping at the wall. Stumbling. They can't see it far off. They need somebody to kind of shake them. Wake up. Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. He'll help you out of that situation. He'll help you. Hallelujah. He loves you. And he cares for you. He went to the cross. He died. He shed his blood. Hallelujah. That you can be made whole. That you can be made free. Amen. That's the reason he received those 39 stripes. So you can be healed. Amen. Isaiah tells us we were healed by his stripes. Amen. We're past tense. Hallelujah. So that tells me before the devil even tries to put anything on you, you're already healed. It's up to you whether you accept it or not. Amen. If you accept it, then boy, you're going to have to have a battle then. Fight it. Re don't receive it. Hallelujah. You might have, you might. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say this. Because I know the faith that God has put in me. Now I have had to wrestle some things for a week or two. I've had to. Hallelujah. And I know everybody under here has at a time or, or two. Hallelujah. But see, God... It's trying to make us and mold us. God didn't put a sickness on us. Don't ever get me wrong. Hallelujah. God don't ever put a sickness on nobody. That's right. 
The devil is what brings sickness to you. But see, God empowers us to rebuke that thing and not receive it. Now, weaker Christians sometimes will allow this thing to take hold. Well, it ain't up to us to judge or to hurt that person. We are to reach out and lift them up and say, the Lord is your healer. He'll help you out of this. And don't get me wrong, nobody has said anything. <laughs> so I don't even want the devil to go there with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I am just preaching whatever God's putting on my heart tonight. Hallelujah. But sometimes, you know, a word will come forth. And it's just a little bit different, but it's still the same thing. Every word that's been preached here, every service, has been all God. Every bit of it. Every word that was said. Every word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I, I tell you, God is so good. I called Sister Joanne today. And we were just rejoicing over the phone. <laughs> I tell you what, she has a smile every time. And just, whoo, Sister Brittany. Hallelujah. She just blesses my heart every time. I talk to her or I'm just around her. Hallelujah. She just has that joy bubbling over, don't she, Brother Lord? Hallelujah. Just bubbling all the time. My goodness, it's contagious. Isn't that wonderful? That it's contagious. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But let me go on. And he said, And Jesus answered and said, What unto him? What will thou have... What will thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Come on. Woo! Once he got his sight, he didn't go and just do everything in the flesh he wanted to do. No, because he knew who touched him. He knew who healed him. He got right in there and followed behind it. Well, see, that's what God's wanting us to do when he opens our spiritual eyes that we can see. Or if he opens your natural eyes that you can see, he's wanting you to follow him. Follow him. Hallelujah. I told the Lord today. I said, Lord, the more we, believe me, the more you pray to be like Jesus, you better as well arm your mind likewise to suffer. Because I'm telling you, you're going to be hated, despised. <laughs> you said, oh, Sister Brenda, I don't know about it. Read your Bible. So if you want to be like Jesus, you might as well brace yourselves. That's right. Hallelujah. But you know, it don't matter. I won't be like my Lord. It don't make no difference because ain't nobody like him. My goodness, the love. Remember when he put the Holy Ghost in me. My goodness, the love that I felt. I loved everybody in the world. Everybody. There wasn't a person I believed that I would not love. But it's still that way. Why? Because of Jesus. Jesus. I tell you what, I just bubbled over. Couldn't wait to tell people, but it was midnight. Couldn't call nobody and tell them that Jesus Christ had just filled me with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Mom and Dad come in. My husband was asleep. Baby was asleep. And I was 19 years old. And I run, grab my stepfather by the neck. I said, the Lord just filled me with the Holy Ghost. Well, I was bubbling over. Big old smile come on his face. He said, he did, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, yes, he did. Thank you, Jesus. My goodness. I could have got out there and leaped over horses, I believe. Hallelujah. Because that's how good I felt in Jesus and the love that was bubbling over on me. And the peace. Never felt peace like that. Never. Never felt a love like that. There ain't no love on this earth that can compare to the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. And mother come in right behind him. And I grabbed her by the neck. I said, Mother, Jesus just filled me with the Holy Ghost. Big old grin come on her face too. She said, Good, Brenda, that's good. That's wonderful. My goodness. Went to bed praying. Prayed just about that whole night. Because, man, I was still excited. Woo! I wasn't wanting to study no sleep. I'd been up with the baby. The baby's uh, crying and fretting. Took a long time to get him to sleep. And I'd been seeking for the Holy Ghost. It's how hungry you are. 
It's how hungry you get. I done gave my heart to God, but I just hadn't had the Holy Ghost yet. And I wanted the Holy Ghost. And I said, Lord, fill me with the Holy Ghost, Father. I want the Holy Ghost, Father. I just know I need it. I said, give me the Holy Ghost. And after I got tear away to sleep and laid him in the bassinet, my husband was asleep. I lay down. Well, I was tired and I was weary and I just started softly praying. And the Lord said, my daughter, if you'll get up and get on your knees. He could have easily filled me with the Holy Ghost with me laying there. But he wanted me to get up and do an action. Hallelujah. Just see how bad I wanted it. Of course, you know, flesh, you know, I told you, flesh would talk to you. You know what it said? Oh, you know how tired you are. You just got that baby to sleep. You gonna get down there in that floor. You gonna wake that baby up. You gonna wake your husband up. Hallelujah. But I was so hungry. I said, I don't care who I wake up. I'm gonna obey my Lord. Hallelujah. I got down in that floor. I said, Lord, here I am. You told me you'd give me the Holy Ghost. Well, he did. Hallelujah. I felt the power of God enter me. And I started speaking in tongues. Amen. And that wonderful love. It's like oceans of love. Amen. And that peace. Amen. It is like a sweeping of peace. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, when I woke up the next morning, I was on the phone. <laughs> I said, what are you doing on the phone? Hallelujah. Well, I was. As early as I could think that people would accept my call. I was there... At that time, you had to go like this. <laughs> I mean, like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the uh, first of the 70s. And uh, and I was there calling. I said, guess what? I said, the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost last night. Brenda, what are you calling me for? I said, Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost last night. I said, it's wonderful. I can't hardly contain it. I want you to know about it. Well, thank you for coming. I said, okay. I'm like, <laughs> Hello. This is Brenda. Guess what? Oh, I was excited. Jesus filled me with the Holy Ghost. Oh, I spoke in other tongues. And I feel a love like I ain't never felt. Hallelujah. Some rejoice with me, some didn't. But I tell you what, I called everybody I could think of. <laughs> they heard that Jesus gave the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they were probably calling other people and saying, you don't believe what that crazy Brenda just called me <laughs> and said. Hallelujah, I don't care. I don't care. People say I'm crazy today. I've lost my mind, but that's okay, Brother Roy. I know I have. <laughs> Lord's putting the mind of Christ in me. Hallelujah. So let him have my mind, I'll take the mind of Christ. My old mind can't do no good for nobody. <laughs> but his mind, hallelujah, it'll help everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the glory of the Lord. Yes. Feel his love and his strength. Yes. This should have come to the Lord. Hallelujah. I had other scriptures, but I feel just to go ahead and change the order of the service. Hallelujah. I just want you to Hear and see the joy of the Lord. And you know, it's good to hear. It's just like faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. And that's the reason I encourage people to tell their testimonies. Amen. The Bible says we overcome by the Word of our testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. And a lot of people say, well, they just don't want to hear that testimony. Get up and tell it. I don't care if they've heard it a hundred times. Tell it again. You're glorifying Him. You're giving glory to Him. Hallelujah. It builds people's faith when they hear what God has done for you. Hallelujah. When I tell people that we sold out everything we had years ago, when I was carrying my son right back there, Timothy, sold everything. Didn't have a refrigerator, didn't have anything. Only kept a few chains of clothes. And let tear away my son. He was three at that time. 
let him pick out a few toys. Because <laughs> everybody was selling out to Jesus. And he picked out his favorite toys. And I said, well, now get one of your favorite. I said, you don't have to give all of them, but just get one of your favorite. Because, see, you've got to teach your children to give. you got to teach them to prefer each other. Hallelujah. They only know it if we teach it to them. Hallelujah. So he did, and gladly, he gladly gave it over. He said, okay, Mom. Hallelujah. And I tell you what, that little man would preach my, 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 my. He had Brother R.W. Moore down packed. He would get that frog. Mother had bought him a frog. I don't know if you remember him, but that had a yellow airline on it and had a ball on the end of it, and they'd mash it, and that frog would hop. <laughs> well, he'd make it hop, but when he got tired of it hopping, hallelujah, he'd start preaching with it. And I mean, he just, Jesus, 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 glory, 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 Jesus, Jesus. And I mean, Brother Moore, he would stick that leg out like that, and he'd go like that. And you'd see Terry Wade, he'd go, Jesus, 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 glory, glory, glory. We'd be sitting there, you know, just thrilled to death to see him act like that. Hallelujah. And he'd come over, he'd put his head on my, in Jesus' name, heal her. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless my heart. My goodness, it bless my heart. <laughs> All my children were toward God like that. All of them were. Hallelujah, because I trained them up the way they should go. If I felt like it was anything wrong for me, I didn't do it to them. I would let them do it. Because if we allow our children to do anything that we feel like is wrong for us, what time are we going to stop them from doing it? When they get 10. When they get 15. Hallelujah. Some let their young girls wear makeup and stuff, but yet they won't put it on their set. But they'll let them wear their makeup. Hallelujah. And say, well, I'll change them later. I'll tell them that it's wrong. No, you got to teach that child from here. Hallelujah. That it's wrong. Whatever is wrong, that you feel like God is teaching you that is wrong. Hallelujah. Then that's what you got to do. Because he holds us responsible. I didn't put shorts. I didn't put pants on my little girl. In the summertime, she wore dresses down to her knees. I taught her how to set in them. Hallelujah. I said, if you're squatting down, you pull that dress down. And you get it down. I said, don't you let your legs fly open. I said, you be, you know, they have to be taught. They have to be taught. Hallelujah. And in the wintertime, I would put two or three tights on her. You know, those hose tights little girls wear. And that's how she kept warm with coats and sweaters and things. Now, this is just a little bit of wisdom. It's not coming out against anyone. I'm just telling you what I did. Hallelujah. Because every man has to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. But I'm just saying, if you believe it's wrong, what age are you going to tell them that they can't do it anymore? Are you going to do it at 10 years old, at 8 years old? Well, then you know what they're going to say? Well, Mama, Daddy, why did you let me wear it when I was younger if it's wrong now? Why is it wrong now and it wasn't then? That's right. Well, see, that's the way. That's the same way with Christmas. People lying to their children, telling them it was a Santa Claus. They said, well, I'll just put this little white lie to them. And when they get older, I'll tell them the truth. No, you need to tell them the truth when, for age one years old. That's right. One years old. Hallelujah. Because we have got to train our children up in the way they should go. When they get older, they won't depart from it. And that's just what we got to do. Because why? God's holding us. He holds me responsible. Now if they get out away from it as they grow older, I believe somewhere God will bring them right back. Because he said they would not depart from it. I had all kind of little Christian books and, and I'd read to them and pray. And I would be praying during the day. I'd wake up and get all my housework done. All the laundry done I needed to get done. And at one time I had three little children, stair steps. And, but yet I felt such a drawn in my heart to pray, such a, a dedication to walk in a concentration with the Lord. And I would watch them while they would play outside and walk and pray. After I got everything done and after they would eat, I'd let them go out and play a little bit longer. But God, when I felt that drawn that I got to get alone and I got to really bear down, it was time for them to lay down anyway. I said, children, to go pray and I'd get them in there beside me 
Sister Miranda, and I would pray. And they would look cute little old things, my goodness. Like this. <laughs> oh, they would touch my heart. My, my, my. They would touch my heart, and they would pray. And I'd look over there after I was praying and weeping. <laughs> well, they would just be <laughs> knocked out. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And then I would really bear down and pray. Hallelujah. But the Lord would always. Hallelujah. I tell you, it was a blessing. It was a blessing. But Sister Sheila and I were talking earlier. My goodness, if we didn't have church close, we were calling around finding where church was, carpooling, getting together, and, and going to hear the Word of God. Our husbands would get up at 4 o'clock and have to be at work, what was it, 5.30 or 6. And we would carpool together and drive all the way to Ryan's in Mississippi. They were in revival. Boy, we were thrilled to death. And our husbands had to get up and go to work the next day, but they didn't care. Boy, they were hungry. We got to go hear what Jesus has got to say. Amen. Hallelujah! Well, we were on the way back, and it was about 2 o'clock in the morning, coming through between Savannah, no, Pickwick Dam, and, and Savannah, right there where Brother R. W. Moore's church is, about 2 a.m. in the morning. They weren't even going to get to lay down to get up to go to work. They were just going to have to go in and get ready. <laughs> and so the car just goes dead. And Brother Larry pulls over to the side of the road. And they started talking and said, My goodness, ain't no... And back then everything closed up with the chickens. And opened with the chickens. So I want nothing around them. Nothing. We doubted even the car would drive by. And they said, oh, goodness, we're going to be late for work. But see, God takes care of everything. He takes care of everything. Amen. They got out and looked, and they said, oh, goodness, it's a fan belt. It's broke. We're going to be here. So we joined hands, and we started praying. Lord, send us help. God, we need help. Hallelujah. Well, it wasn't 10 or 15 minutes, was it, Sister Sheila? A car pulls over in the front. He gets out and he walks back there. He said, you folks need any help? Anything wrong? Hallelujah. And they said, yeah, we got a broken fan belt. Ain't nothing we're going to be able to do to daylight. He said, well, come here just a minute. So they get out and they follow him over there and he opens up the trunk. He had a whole trunk full of all different sizes of fan belts. Nothing but fan belts. He said, what size do you need? Hallelujah. They got a fan fan belt. They put it on the car, we went on home, and they went to work. That's right. And what did they do when they got off work? We got ready and went back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we were hungry. Yeah. Hungry for the gospel. Hungry for Jesus. Yeah. Woo! Hallelujah. Couldn't let it go. Because we wanted more and more Jesus. Yeah. More. And like I was saying, we sold everything out. Yeah. And Timothy was coming. Didn't like me just a few weeks. No, really, I think I was a week over. How it was. And I was praying. We lived by faith. And we was living in the back of the church that we had there. And didn't have running water. Had electricity, though. <laughs> had an outhouse back there. Hallelujah. And we would take sink baths. And once or twice a week, we'd fill up a tub and take a Good old bell. Hallelujah. That's what they did in the old days. Older than me. <laughs> I want to stress that. <laughs> well, even some do it today. Hallelujah. But anyway, um, what I'm getting at, I told the Lord, we didn't have a refrigerator. We'd get things, uh, ice to keep things cool in the uh, chest. And I said, Lord, I said, I don't need a refrigerator. I said, we're content. We're happy. And I don't feel like I'm lacking anything. But I'm just presenting a need. I said, Timothy's going to have to have a, a refrigerator to, to keep his milk cool.